Brad, let's talk to you. Yeah. Oh man. What? Did you shred it? That's right. Did <clears throat> how, what did you shred this weekend? How shredding did it get? How gnar gnar was it yeah. out there? Did you completely shred the gnar? Par- not, partial gnar? Not very. Par gnar? I didn't. I don't think I left the house all weekend. Nice. Yeah. That's good. Hang on. Let me think. Let me take stock of my well no. Let's not take stock of my life. <laughs> that Here, bad. right now. That could is, be bad. This is the intervention podcast. Well, let me think back. What Brad doesn't know. <laughs> this. That's, to have. Well, that's why he just skipped Drew and went straight to me. I see where this is going. Yep. Now Drew's got something way worse in store. We think oh, Dad is see. killing you. It's breaking up your marriage and your life. Well, I did. I, I did have to go to the Walgreens for about ten minutes on Saturday. Does that count? Yeah. That's leaving the that's house. Leaving the house. Did you Man. have to put shoes on? No, perfect. No, I didn't. I wore flip flops because it's yeah. right down the street. Yeah. They're, they're nice flip flops. There's no such thing. Yeah, what's a nice? Flip-flop? I don't know. Yeah. What does it have? Like it's, it's it's not that far. If they were slippers, maybe I had to go pick. up. I know where that Walgreens is. I had You're to go crossing pick- a major road. I had to go pick what Gary. Yeah, eh, whatever. I had to go pick up one thing. More flip flops. Anyway, I should have worn shoes. shoes. I should have worn shoes because because you're going outside. I, I, this is because you kicked a rusty nail. This like salsa. What were you getting? <laughs> that was a prescription. Okay, prescription salsa. I don't know if for socks. It's kind of weird to talk about. But I injured my foot in the course of that. Oh man! Somehow. Yeah, because you weren't wearing right. fucking yeah, no, wear no, fucking it wasn't, proper it shoes. Wasn't, it wasn't like I stepped on something. Did you turn or an ankle. Uh, last week we talked a little about flip flops, and uh, this week we're going to talk a little more about flip flops. This comes from Jordan. He says most of I spend most of my time in some brown all leather flip flops, and I would never wear them to the office. But I have always thought they were acceptable for any situation that did not require a blazer. That is a wide range. So, like a fancy restaurant. So, like you're wearing a tuxedo. You're not wearing a blazer. He says, he, what I am implying from this is flip flops are a go. Uh, after listening to last week's bombcast, I have one very important question. Is it really true that there's no such thing as nice flip flops? <laughs> so, so, here's the thing. This Will crowd, will know this. Yeah. I am a flip flop aficionado. Yeah, yeah. You you're. Are. Yeah, flip, I have been wear, wearing aficionado. flip flops for for many years. In fact, yeah. I thought you were like a hippie early when I met you. <laughs> you I was like you were wearing them all the time. This was, was like, the what? most flip flop unfriendly office I've ever worked in. Yeah, I thought you guys. Everybody has beards. You're all internet fuckers. Yeah, I thought it was just like live and let live, man. Yeah. Laissez faire. No, but uh, no, no like, shoes. Eventually, no socks, Jeff no pulled service. me aside and was like, "Hey, we got to talk about the flops." <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know what where you you're are, from. Sean Coons? What yeah. Is, yeah, Coons can wear. Why, he why doesn't Coons? wear. He didn't wear flip flops. He left his flops in our office when he quit our. At That's because he didn't need. That's because he didn't wear them. He just <laughs> walked out barefoot <laughs> and like loose and fancy free. He yeah. left the advantage Coons shoes in there too. Those are amazing. Those was don't the ever best, talk bad about best those. pair of bad tennis. So shoes what are you saying team. here? Well, as as the kind of uh, defender of the flop, uh, where are you gonna? What are you gonna answer? Is there no nice flip flop? I have a pair of nice flip flops. That you would wear. So you have dress flops. I've been to I've been to parts of the of the equatorial regions that are like nice resorts mm-hmm. where you go and basically you you know you're wearing flops the whole time. Are you wearing sandals? So, or are you wearing equi- flip flops? Equ- uh, horse equatorial or, or equator? Equ- equator equine is horse, I believe. Okay, yeah, yes. at the, near I, the equator. I don't know. You, Tropical regions. I wouldn't be surprised with either with you. It's both. I we uh, I you don't wear flip flops around horses because you will lose toes that way. All right, because they step really? on you when you're not wearing real shoes. You got you. What if you're fucked wearing, up? Forever. What if you're wearing real shoes? Don't wear sneakers around horses either. Why? Because they step on you and they weigh thousands of what pounds. What do I wear around? Fuck you up. What should I wear boots. around horses? Boots, boots are what you wear around horses. Boots, cowboy boots. boots. No, well, I mean, if you're a fucking cowboy, yeah, of course. I am not. But fucking you should cowboys, just wear. But there are things <laughs> called paddock boots. There, are, there are work boots. Any of those will be sufficient for wearing around horses. If you are at a resort, yes, it is acceptable to wear a pair of nice leather flip flops to dinner. <laughs> what about plastic ones? Plastic flip flops also okay. You, somebody's gonna look down their nose at you, but they're probably an asshole. So you know it's fine. Fuck them. Don't don't wear leather. Le- I'm I gotta come down I on think the no flip flops. I'm gonna say side. leather flip flops are called sandals. Nope, nope. Sandals have a thing in the back that holds the heel on, so you don't make the the traditional flip flop noise. Oh, you're right. If you're wearing yeah. those, no, you're, you're you're out of my restaurant. If you can walk silently in the shoe yeah. without having to modify your stride in a noticeable yeah. way, yeah. it's probably okay. okay. Otherwise, say no to the flop. <laughs> don't shake your. Face. Max writes and says, "Being a proud Australian, this has to come from last week. I don't know. He's probably rich." Exactly. <laughs> Max in Australia typed on his gold plated keyboard. Had his koala butler write in. 
mouthful of eucalyptus leaves just eating copies of video games because there yeah, that's you yeah, can. that's where that's where the power comes from being a proud australian i was confused by your line of questioning about when and where it's appropriate to wear flip-flops mm. or is there known down under thongs okay so that's i grew up calling them thongs mm. and then at some point they changed to flip-flops at yeah, some point the too. wide the wide term for thongs became flip-flops see a thong for us was always or, something you wear on your body you know, yeah, I mean, thong. that's what a thong is now here. Yeah. Yes, I've heard definitely. it sung about. Thanks, Cisco. Yeah. But even pre-thong song, mm-hmm. the flip-flop change happened. Okay. Cisco did not cause that. He just rode the wave. By the time it hits spring, September, I am pretty much exclusively in thongs at all times. This is a lot funnier to read. Yeah. This one. Most establishments will let you in if you're wearing them, and they wouldn't be out of place in most modern or casual workplaces. I wear them with jeans and have even wore them on dates before, and no eyebrows were raised. Just thought I'd let you guys know that if you're ever in Oz, yeah, like the prison show, mm-hmm. you know, Oz, Australia, prison colony, or a prison colony where they're all paid a billion dollars. <laughs> Please but don't hesitate to rock the flip shoes. flops with impunity. Cannot afford shoes. What's going on down? They're spending it all on video games down under. Huh. Koala bears. Man, Australia sounds so chill. It sounds pretty great. Sounds, except it sounds for, hot. Except for like except everything for that's trying to kill you. Kill you. Yeah. yeah. Everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're wearing open toed shoes with like scorpions on your right. feet that, constantly. Okay. Yeah. And you, black widow spiders. And, nope. I'm out. Not in town with that. Ugh. Max from Australia writes in and says, last week, some guy named Max from Australia wrote in saying how it was okay to wear thongs with jeans and at work and a bunch of other crap. Yeah. As another person named Max also in Australia, do not listen to this crazy person. <laughs> he is crazy. <laughs> Thong uh, beef. Really hope it's yeah. the same guy. Yeah, thong beef. Just freaking out. Right. So wait, what did I do? Oh, that's not right. I made the wrong impression. Um, Max in Australia writes in. This is the original Max, not the second Max. This is first Max. Regarding thongs. The other oh. Max sounds like a dork. He's probably from lame-ass Melbourne. <laughs> I'm from the far superior Sydney. Everyone wears thongs here in summer, <laughs> and most people that do so are stylish and attractive. All right. Oh, man. Australian beef. That's right. There you have it. So Isn't that just like kangaroo? I don't know. I've never been there. One of them koala bears. That's not beef. Hmm. All right. Max in Australia writes and says, look, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm a dork, says the guy wearing thongs with jeans and at work. And you're from Sydney, the L.A. of Australia. Uh Uh-huh. She's getting real in there. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. (laughs) I don't know what the fuck's. (laughs) It's a real beef happening. The fuck is in the water in Australia. Australian beef. Yeah. Sydney. Okay, so what do we got? We got Sydney beef and Melbourne. Melbourne beef? Yeah. Okay. Melbourne. 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 I don't know. Sure. Melbourne identity. Uh, Dude, if this keeps up, we that that all emails podcast we used to talk about might be, become a reality. <laughs> right? This is gold. Your insider scoop uh, happening yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, intense Boom. scoops. All right, James from Australia writes in and says, "James from Australia here, given the surprising number of mentions of Australia over the last few podcasts, I thought it would be very un-Australian to let the inaccuracies of my supposed countrymen to stand." Thongs are acceptable to wear in almost any circumstance, but never with long pants. Okay. First, Max was probably lying about having a job and wears his thongs and jeans while on a Sydney street corner playing some Swedish steel drum thing. (laughs) And then he provided some fun facts about Australia, which I figure, you know, if we're really going to go down this road, we need to know more about that. We need to get the lay of the land. Sure. It's only fair. All the deadly animals you hear about live in Sydney and never come to Melbourne. (laughs) Okay. The set for Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome was unavailable for the music video of California Love, so they just filmed Tupac and Dr. Dre performing on the streets of Sydney. Okay. Melbourne was going to be the capital of Australia until Sydney whined about it, and we had to build the shithole that is our nation's capital, <laughs> Canberra. There's apparently another city in Australia. Okay. It's a Canberra place. And that that's it. Thanks. Thank you, James. Oof. The <laughs> Australian thong... Debate is raging. <laughs> it's hot. Is it is extremely hot. Oh, we should go to Australia. We probably should go to Australia. First hand account. Forget yeah. the kilts. We need to know what's going on. Pax Australia is like Halloween this year. Yeah. Whoa. Weird. Yeah. Weird timing. Matthew writes in and says, I know it's been a few weeks since you talked about it, but I want to con- I wanted to contribute to the flip flop discussion. Oh man. Jeez. Mm-hmm. 
I work in a molecular molecular biology laboratory at UC Berkeley and use some fairly hazardous materials, radioactive isotopes, mutant viruses, concentrated acids, etc. Despite this, people still wear flip-flops in the lab. Gross. As you can imagine, this has led to several chemical burns and general injuries over the years. We're supposed to wear long pants and closed-toed shoes all the time, but people insist on wearing whatever. I think this is a testament to people's love of their flip-flops, no matter the hazard. I'm originally from Philadelphia, so I find all this very strange. Flip-flops are for the beach, and that's it. Keep up the great work. It helps the hours of experiments go by. I especially enjoy the science sections. You guys get close enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, yeah. I'll take it. Not the flip-flops, though. No. He's right. Scientists Scientists agree. That's right. No flip-flops, no flip-flops. in the workplace. Well, yeah. regarding the risky flip-flop wearing, it is Berkeley. Yeah, totally. So. I'm surprised that they're wearing clothes at all. <laughs> Cal from Melbourne writes in and says, I realize you probably don't want to turn the podcast into a personal message service for feuding Australians. That's where you're wrong. (laughs) Never assume. But this is a quick fashion note for Max from Sydney. If you're wearing thongs everywhere, you're probably some sort of clueless Westie who thinks he's cool but is oblivious to just how classless he is. Thongs have a time and place. And you mentioned Sydney people being stylish and attractive. Way to live up to the shallow Sydney, (laughs) Sydney stereotype, man. That is all. Man. Bunch of criminals. Yeah, you can tell that they're all descended from the uh, prison colony because they are at each other's throats all the time. Man. The real danger, the real murderous beasts are the Australians, I think. They're only in Sydney, though. Apparently. Yeah. Or this Canberra. This throws the whole thing off. I don't even know what to think anymore. Watch your toes, man. Mauricio in Florida says, hello, my name is Mauricio and I'm from Florida. And I've got a hypothetical scenario that hurts my brain to think about. I'll try to explain it as simply and quickly as possible. First, the facts. A TV screen is composed of pixels. Each pixel can display a combination of red, green, or blue. For the hell of it, we'll use a 1080p TV for this scenario. That is 1920 by 1080 pixels, or 2,073,600 pixels. Okay. Check. You got it? Got it. I'll trust your math on that. Every single image that is displayed or will ever be displayed on that TV is just a combination of those 2 million pixels in different RGB combinations. There is a finite, although incomprehensibly large, amount of combinations. And that should be number of combinations, I think. These pixels could be in. The point being, it is finite. So, if a TV could hypothetically cycle through every single possible combination of those 2 million pixels and combination of RGB within those pixels... Would you then not hypothetically see every single possible thing that exists or could exist on that TV screen? Yes. You would see past, present, and future. Alien worlds, an image of Hitler wearing a clown nose. The same image of Hitler wearing a clown nose from every single possible angle. The numbers get insanely large. It could take billions of years for this TV to cycle through every possible combination, possibly longer than the life of the universe. But it would eventually show everything, right? I guess. Yes. Yeah. Well, you're, yeah. Kind of, you're kind of my math checks out. Well, you're you're kind of setting this up not to fail, right? If you're saying it's ultimately you're Let's show start every, doing yeah. this. We have a bunch of TVs. We here. got so many TVs. We could have multiple TVs going at once. Let's just lower the resolution. It'll go faster. Oh, that's a good call. <laughs> Take half 320 the time. by 240. Kapow. I'll see the universe in SD. Yeah. Uh well, you know, I don't know. Maybe e- enhance SD. Why don't we look at it in SD, and then yeah. when we see things we like, we can flag those and go like, we would like to see this in a higher resolution, thank you. And then sure. use that to inform the algorithm that does it in 1080p. Man. And then move that up to 4K. How is somebody just not doing this already? I know. Somebody probably is. This is how people predict the stock market, right? Yeah, they all turn their TVs on to different yeah. channels. and then Just go random. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I think that looked like Apple stock. That guy looked really happy. I'd love it. But we don't know if it took place in the past or the future. He just had a big, goofy mustache, so there's no way of knowing. You think you would be... Could you get charged with bootlegging movies if you bootleg the movie before the movie's even concepted or created? Then they're bootlegging you. Future right. crime. If I just have all Pre-cogs. the... If I have all the frames from everything, and I'm like... I And then post them to Twitter, and then you'll get shut down. But I had it before you even thought of this movie. Take that TV... Write your name on it. Drop it in the mailbox. Send it to myself. Mail it to yourself. That's how copyright works. Yeah. Uh, apparently, some people have sent some emails in what? 
to bombcast at giantbomb.com. Emails? Bombcast at giantbomb.com is the email address, and you can send in your emails uh, to that address, and uh, we will scour through them, remove the ones that are about Australia and are not awesome. <laughs> okay. Like most of them. Mm. That came in this week. Boom. You're just adding to the beef. There's a little oh. spice for that pot. I know. Yeah. Australia, trying too hard, as it turns out. <laughs> Dude, I've known that for years. Dude, thought? don't antagonize yeah. them. They all have shivs. They're not coming here. Yeah, this is a the flight is like 20 hours. Yeah. Yeah. He's just going to row that whole island over here and just fucking show up on the shore. He's going to stand on a boomerang and throw it and hope for the best. <laughs> now, what's going to happen is that Dan Teasdale is a sleeper agent. He's going to be in town for GDC. He's going to say, look at this spinning limousine and then just like break yes. everybody's neck. He's yep. drilling a hole through the earth right down to Australia so they can just jump in it and right. pop up over here. Yeah. They're both digging from opposite ends. Yeah. That's why I moved to Seattle. It's, it's like the exact opposite. If you look on a map, yeah. I know it doesn't look like it. You look at a globe. Right. But you can follow the flat map in half to make them line up. Yeah. I've done it. Yeah, exactly. Mad lib, but with more It's like a wormhole. Lives. That's how we're going to teleport through space. Also, we're going to fold the map and just yeah. go boop, boop, point yeah. A, point B. Yep. Some people holes. don't believe it. No, science. I know. That's yeah. I'm a scientist. So you watch Cosmos this weekend is what you're saying? Yeah. Got it. Yeah, definitely. I did. It was pretty good. <laughs> Time is a flat thing. Yes. Yep. Uh, Nico writes in and says, first of all, you have it wrong. <laughs> okay. I'm from New Zealand. <sighs> and the correct term for these so-called flip-flops, flip-flops is jandals. Nope. Those Aussies who have been riding in have it especially wrong by, yeah, I guess, by calling them thongs. All this brings to mind are G-strings, but that's not surprising, as Australians are usually wrong anyway. Wow. Now nah, that's just... Oceania getting, beef. Yeah. <laughs> so New Zealand and Australia at each other's throats, which I, as I understand it is pretty common. Yeah, you're going to get a Tasmanian in here next week just freaking the fuck out. Right. Jandals, what the fuck huh? are you doing? Jandals? No, that's not right. What is, that's not real. Is that typo? Someone made that up. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Like mandals, I get it's sure. stupid. Yeah, but I get why someone would say it. There's a logic to that. Jandals. What's the J? Jamming sandals. Wow. Yep. What do I wear if I'm tired? Jandals. Slandals. Pajandals, Sleep sandals. Perhaps. Yeah. Pajandal. Pajandals. Slippers. Yeah. Yeah. I got nothing. Okay. Eric writes in, and he is a computer scientist at USC. Sounds good. Just a quick response to Mauricio from Florida and his thought experiment of watching all the images a TV yes. could produce. <laughs> yes. That's great. He is correct. I knew it. <laughs> Let's get to work. If you enumerate all possible combinations, the TV will display every image possible for a 1080p TV. But unfortunately, what? it would take the life of the universe <laughs> infinite times over to oh do so. God. But that's, that's if you're at ten, it was knock the resolution down. Let us assume a one gigahertz TV, i.e., a TV that refreshes every nanosecond much faster than our current 120 hertz TVs. Okay, we'll get there. Given approximately 2 million pixels, each with three possible assignments, RGB. I'll do it in black and white. It would take 3 to the 2 millionth power nanoseconds to display all possible combinations. That's really fast, right? Just for clarity, 3 to 250 nanoseconds is approximately... 10 to the 101st power on, years. Ten, what? Okay, that's a lot of that's years. It's a lot. Yeah. It's like 11 years. I get a calculator, you but it just, said, it just said E. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the current estimate for the heat death of the universe is approximately 10 to the 100th power years. Thus, oh, we're so close. You'd have barely scratched the surface of the possible images when the Earth universe died. Well, so let's don't get go started. starting a business. So don't go starting a business to enumerate all these images. We're going. Uh, we're going. 320 by 240, black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll take like a quarter of the time. Yep. P.S. Don't try to parallelize this. Why not? Even if you made each pixel out of an atom and used all the atoms in the universe to generate the images. <laughs> That's exactly where I was going. <laughs> it would till still take an insurmountable amount of time. That's what they say. Wait, they always say that. You're yeah. a dreamer, Vinny. Yeah, they're, they're like, radio, that'll It'll never take an work. insurmountable. If you want to use atoms and microwaves. How can we beam? I don't think they ever said that. I, you want to make a burrito hot in 15 seconds? That's yeah, impossible. I don't know. Like, make some kind of super fire? Yeah, what? What the fuck is that? That's crazy. It'll burn first. I don't think that's what they said. It'll kill us all. But that'll be get every image, right? I only want one. Well, it's random, though. Which so. one? The one of the dude in the car. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> 
<laughs> have to know how it works. That is the heat death of I'm, the universe. And, and like your your odds are better than one in because you know there would be a lot of images of the dude in the car. Yeah. So I don't. I'm confused about his methodology though. Because There'd be every you know every dude, including you, with every car. Yeah, you'd see. True. You'd see everything True. in every position. In every position. Yeah, I don't understand how he, he's anthropomorphized he, cars. He, even <laughs> for real sexy fan art, cars, like John Vignacchi cars right having yeah. sex with dragons. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the cars. We've got the cars sequel. You've been Have waiting you for. Seen what you can do in Disney Infinity? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I'm not. I don't know. Cars, don't, a triple X parody. I don't get the part where he says each pixel can only have three assignments, though. Well, I think he was doing RGB, right? For, yeah, right. But three possible assignments. Wouldn't it be way, way more than that? Because we're talking pixel blending. Yeah, like pixel uses a combination of those three to achieve an actual color, right? Well, he's maybe he's saying that each pixel blends with the yeah. in, a, in a pixel radius. There's three possible assignments. He doesn't say that the assignments are there's there's three assignables. Okay. Not that the, the pixel can only be in one of three right. states. He's no, saying right. it'll work. Sure. He is All saying right. the first sentence in there says yes, yes, right, it right? will work. Okay, right. so we just need a faster fucking TV, and yes. we then we need two of them and a lower re- low resolution. Done. Yeah. I don't care. I 480p. Watched. It's not a real resolution. We'll do it anyway. Well, then I feel you like need... I was experimenting thing with this one. I had a cable box at home trying to get porn. But then you need... You push, you push three and seven yeah, at the you, same yeah, time, yeah. and you see everything in the universe. Yeah. Sometimes it's a nipple. No, it's you push the four buttons at the same... You turn it to channel two. You push all four buttons at the same time. Yep. The box turns off. Yeah. Then you push channel down, and it switches to the movie channel, and you can get it. See? We were figuring this shit out years ago. Totally. Don't tell me We're science. ahead of the game. Like, you, yeah. you, you also need a way to not only randomize all the values, but also build a database of all the previously displayed images so like, you're not fucking re- mechanical repeating anything. looks through that shit, right? Yeah. Just, right? just be like, hey, find it. And then that database would get bigger and bigger, and then you'd have to hit against it, and it would take longer and longer. The question nah. is how much storage would you need to store every image in the universe? We're fucked. Send it back to no, that guy. You, you, you would just use math. You would oh, say, okay. like, okay, this TV is going to do, yeah. you know, the first ones that are in this order, and mm. then we're going to go to here. What do you There's do with your cell process or your PS3? True. Exactly. We'll bolt, yeah, bolt like, all these PS3s together. There's like 18 of them in my house. We'll you launch know. some fucking missiles. Guys, the, guys. I haven't had the toaster in the in the washing machine. I haven't I been plugged in fridge. for a while. So. I've started this project, and I've seen it. I'm pretty sure Jack Tretton's next step has been figured out during the podcast. <gasps> <laughs> I just want to see that guy fucking that car. He heard last week's podcast and he's like, I gotta go. I gotta get out of here. I gotta go. My true calling. It just it just called me. Oh, it's thing. amazing. I love this concept. Wait, what if what if he's a mechaphile? Uh, it's now, no. I don't want to think about that. This Come guy on. this guy in the article this guy in the article estimated there are about five hundred other dudes in the world with the same is, How would you estimate? I know. I'm sorry, sorry five hundred what? Five, guys. Like okay, five hundred other okay, people for, doing what he's doing. For a second I thought you said five hundred million. I was gonna say, <laughs> Come on. <No. laughs> Some hot cars out there, but let's just the one time. Fort's is a gateway drug. Yep. Uh Sam in Brisbane oh, writes God. in. Sam from Brisbane, Queensland. Here, I don't. Awesome. Know, I don't know what a Queensland is. Is it, is it Brisbane? Brisbane. Is Brisbane. Brisbane. I don't, know. I don't know. Melbourne, where the IGN offices used to be. Sydney. By the airport. Hmm. After hearing all my fellow Australians categorically get it wrong in the process, out themselves and in the process, out themselves as un-Australian, I need to close the topic out before we go to war with each other because Queensland will win, and don't think that we won't. Flip flops. Thongs are what we could easily consider our most Australian icon of footwear. Therefore, it is un-Australian to deny an Aussie right to wear their national pride. <laughs> the only exceptions I would consider is when wearing them poses physical risk to the wearer. I think you're a soft Melbourneite, but hey, you want to follow what is deemed safe, then go ahead. Has, has Have any of them responded and not just been total fucking assholes of the person who came <laughs> no, they've all them? been they've all been real monsters. And, and this one is it's like got, this one has got some English issues with it in some spots as well. Sure. I saw a description of these cities uh, that might help contextualize. Yeah. That Sydney is kind of Los Angeles. Okay. And Melbourne is sort of Portland-ish. Hmm. Except more urban. Okay. All right. Uh, David in Brisbane writes in. Thanks for checking in, Dustin. <laughs> Does it start with, you're all fucking wrong? Over the past few weeks, I've heard these Australian themes email, emails come flowing in and was compelled to write in and set the record straight from a Brisbane perspective. <laughs> I will be brief. <laughs> Brisbane, Queensland is the butt of many jokes in Australia because of its rich, rich history of rednecks, racism, and rowdiness. <laughs> We have 1950s-style censorship, rampant alcohol-related violence, and high-profile residents who seem actually deranged. 
Remember that billionaire who wants to build a new Titanic and or a dinosaur theme park? <laughs> he's one of ours and he's a politician now. <laughs> Save for a few decent people, maybe say nine, it is generally an unpleasant place. After living here my whole life, I am leaving soon for fear of it turning into a terrifying Fallout style wasteland filled with crazy people. With all that in mind, Max from Sydney is crazier than any Queenslander for suggesting Australians wear thongs pretty much everywhere. They are exclusively for the beach, walking to the corner shop, or putting the bins out. Mm. But I guess this makes sense since Melbourne is as lovely as a summer breeze and Sydney is a dumb hole. <sighs> Wow. I'm really not getting anywhere. I like that there are a lot of other areas weighing in on this now. I, that's, man, I love the description of a city as a dumb <laughs> hole. A dumb hole. It's fantastic. Gross. <laughs> Tom is a research chemist. Says, mm. please disregard anything the, bio- the biologist said relating to flip flops when he wrote in biologists aren't real scientists. <laughs> <laughs> Now they got science beef. beef. Uh, Chemists do all the real work. Oh, God. (laughs) Why are you staring beeves on this show? I'm just trying to start shit. The world got too peaceful. Yeah. Welcome welcome to the beef cast. All right. Andrew's from Perth. (laughs) Also, Max and James from Australia are both partially correct. Thongs are able to be worn in almost any non professional environment. As a young uni lad. Ugh. A nice pair of $19.99 Havanas with jeans was the rage at pubs. Sometimes, however, due to the weather, they are just a necessity. It hit 49 Celsius last month. Urgh. That's 120 Fahrenheit. Oh. <laughs> Hot as balls. If James from Melbourne thinks the animals from Sydney are deadly, he should visit Western Australia or Queensland. As an impartial observer, however, Sydney is a clear win over Melbourne. And he's in Perth, so he's like okay. a you know innocent bystander in all this, just weighing in. He's trying to settle it, man. He's just trying to, you know, he's, sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. <sighs> but at the very end, there's a swoop and poop of him just being like, uh, but this thing's way better. I gotta yeah. go. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> it's like stirring it up and going, fuck this. Yeah. Paul is from China. <laughs> Melbourne stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even let us wear thongs here. Uh, uh, they put corn and shrimp on pizza here, and it's weird. Yes, verifiable. Yeah, that's that sounds terrible. That sounds terrible. Also, Brisbane sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, Brisbane yeah, is a bunch f- of fucking animals. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, with that, why don't we get into emails? Emails. Bombcast at giantbomb.com is the email address. Emails have uh, gone dark. I'm a little scared. They here. have gone. It has been a rough month in the world of email to this podcast. Yeah. I. I there's a hundred more of there was three hundred more emails that are like these. This is just a sampling of the topics, hmm. and it's it's all it's all fucking in, bad. In a normal week, how many emails do you get for the cast? Uh, somewhere around two hundred ish. So this has been three hundred this week. Uh, I don't know. Just so, on the topic spikes. No, just on the, okay. the topics. Okay. The specific topics. So some of these I think may close out some of these topics. I don't know. Next email, uh, Russell from Perth writes in. Perth is in Australia, I think. Okay. I'm a California native living in Perth, Western Australia. While I've listened to your podcast from the very start, I've never been compelled to write in until now. Your recent discussion of thongs or flip-flops, as they are properly known, has totally missed the point. I moved here in November of 2013, and by my estimate, somewhere between 1% and 5% of Australians are going around barefoot at any time. (laughs) Footwear etiquette in the workplace is very similar to the United States, unless you are a customer at a retail establishment. I have been baffled by the sight of people young and old going barefoot in grocery stores, shopping malls, and takeaway restaurants. I think he means, like, sure, takeout. Take like, that, that, yeah. He blew his cover. Yeah, he's, he's, you're not a California native. Heads up. Takeaway restaurants. <laughs> I am going to take away this to my motor carriage. <laughs> Throw here's, the here's my CV. Uh, The offenders have ranged from young kids to 30-something adults of varying apparent socioeconomic backgrounds, where in the U.S. only the homeless and insane would be barefoot, unshod Australians from all walks of life will boldly go without shoes. 
Maybe some of your Australian listeners can shed some light on this mystery. So, yeah, maybe the flip-flop thing is just like a smoke screen. And we can find common ground here. Common ground in, like, apparently all Australians are scum because yeah. they're barefoot all the time. Also, they're all, all these people are walking around barefoot in the country most full of things trying to kill you all the time. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Don't just know. carpets of spiders. Yeah, and scorpions and, like, kangaroos. Ugh, yep. I, koalas. I don't know. None of this is making me want to try to make the trip to PAX Australia. But at the same time, all of this is kind of making me want to make the trip to PAX Australia. I think you're honor bound now. Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah. it, 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 to finish the fight. Yeah. Right? Uh, all right. Uh, George in Japan writes in and says, I'm currently living and working in Japan, trying to help teach junior high school students some English. I thought you might be interested to know the gaming habits of 12 to 15 year old Japanese students. And I usually have to pay good money to know what 12 to 15 year old Japanese people are up to. <laughs> so this is great. Uh, the main way students in Japan can express themselves is through pencil cases and charms that hang off their pencil case. By far the single most popular video game franchise these kids are repping is Monster Hunter. In fact, it's rare to see a piece of merch for any other video game. It's often surprising what they aren't aware of. They once asked me what games I play, and when I told them I was currently playing Persona 4 and Dark Souls, they had no idea what I was talking about, even when I wrote Dark Souls on the board in bad Japanese. (laughs) You almost never see people using handhelds like the Vita or 3DS on the street here, but they are out there. If I take my 3DS out with me for the day, I'm almost guaranteed to max out my street passes. This is in a sleepy town on the west coast of Japan. Finally, I thought you might be interested in... Finally, I thought you might be interested to hear what sort of foothold the Xbox 360 has here. I've checked out the video game sections in quite a few electronic shops, and they always have big sections for PS3, PS4, Vita, 3DS, DS, and Wii and Wii U, but I've never seen a single Xbox console or game on a shelf. This holds true for big retail stores and secondhand shops. Would you be surprised if Microsoft made the decision not to release in Japan? By the way, I'm originally from Manchester in the UK, and I would like it known that people people from Liverpool are no good. Okay. <laughs> Great. Glad Great. We, glad we could just, also just what help. we need. Yeah. More beef. More fucking. I believe, I believe the Liverpool beat Manchester United this weekend in the Premier League. I believe it was ha- handily. Well, well so. Right. Shots fired. I don't know. I don't take, fo- take that guy in Japan. I don't follow basketball. So, <laughs> Vlad from Roma- Romania writes in. Everyone has to. This, I feel like we are. This is like they're going to look back. There are going to be books written mm-hmm. about this podcast's role in international relations. Yeah. And like the destruction of all things. Vlad writes and says, I don't fucking know what these those Oceanians are talking about, but here in Romania, they are rightfully called cow toes. How in the hell they came up with thongs is beyond me. Maybe all their blood went to their head from being upside down for so long. <laughs> also, it's written as de gete de vaca. Wow. I'm going to go put on my de gete de vaca because it's hot out. Sure. And it rolls off the tongue. That your That's probably toes. exactly how they say it, too. Yeah. Sounds tough. Vaca means cow mm. in Spanish. I don't know. This is Romania, yeah. so I don't I don't understand how that works. Languages, I mean. Uh, Justin writes, says, I'm sending an email to respond to Tom, who emailed in for your March 11th bombcast. He is 100% correct up until he says that chemists do all the real work. If it wasn't for physicists, then chemists would be stuck in cooking classes or doing alchemy, which you could arguably say is where they belong. Also worth noting, biologists are just people who didn't finish medical school. They're basically the underachievers of the science community. Okay. Yeah. So you know, Tom was saying biologists were dirt, I right? Think so. and chemists I think did all so. the work. Now so. physicists do all the work. Chemists are just glorified cooks, and biologists are just uh, yeah. people who didn't make it through med school. Yeah. Got it. Maya writes in and says, Hello, sir. I am a student, and I would like to ask for your permission to use some of your information about the Tower of Hanoi in my paper. Thank you. What do you say? Sure. No, okay, great. No, I don't give that away for free. Okay. All right. Uh, Brad is an Australian. He writes in and says, Hey guys, I was wondering how you think a Nintendo console with specs on par with the other consoles would be a success. Nintendo arguably has the most popular first party games. So if it had a console that could run next generation games, like a fallout four without compromise, do you think it could be a success? The thought of being able to play smash brothers, Mario Kart and games like GTA on seems like a winner. On a side note, I'm also for us from Australia and can tell you for a fact, we are all still thieves and scoundrels. I would kill my mother for a new pair of thongs, which we all wear on a constant. <laughs> uh, all right. Here's a, an anonymous email from someone who works for the Australian Department of Defense. Okay. Shit. We, we started getting emails from the Australian government. Really? 
this is what I'm saying here. Oh, okay. This is what this one and, and, and another one. Yes. From another person in a gov- government. Okay. I don't know. I, I currently live in Canberra. Canberra? Canberra. Canberra. Canberra? Canberra. And just wanted to let you know it gets a pretty bad rap. It is often criticized for being boring, usually by people whose only experience is a primary school visit to Parliament House as a child. It's actually a pretty rad place to live and was just voted Australia's most livable city. It also has the bonus of being completely planned from the start, putting up there with other great pre-planned cities such as Napierda, Burma, mm-hmm. and Brasilia. I don't know. I don't know. It's from the government. Yeah. It's from the government. That's it? That's it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> this has nothing to that's do all with songs? It, no, it, it was just an introduction? The government at least laid off for that part and didn't say, by the way, fuck everybody else. <laughs> fuck Perth. Yeah. Uh, here's Anonymous from another part of the Australian government. Okay. Uh, more Australian discussion, so I have to chime in while I sit at my desk. First up, the thong debate. Thongs are okay with shorts. Uh, normally boardies and the trendy hipster kids wear them with skinny jorts. That's jean shorts. <laughs> yeah, okay. which I think we can all agree upon. Uh, jeans and thongs are okay, but never for work unless you consider collecting the dole a job. I think that means yeah. not having it. Collecting the dole, I don't know. It's pineapples, right? And to James, I ask, what's the big idea slagging off Canberra? Sure, our shops close at 5. Getting a meal after 8 p.m. is hard to do apart from Macca's. And all the politicians are here, but we have all the hookers and adult shops slash porn you could want. It used to be fireworks, hookers, and porn, but the fireworks got banned for some stupid reason. That's it. That's all he... I've, and he I've, works for the government. Yeah. He's with the government. Uh, Chris from Australia writes and says, thongs are banned at school. Un-Australian. Wollongong would win the war. Although understand why Queenslanders would think this way. Typical bullshit from that hole. Gee. That's it. That's all he said. It was just hole this time, not, hole. not dumb hole. Yeah. I just... <laughs> fuck, man. Uh, Bryce from Birmingham says, I'm a biomedical scientist. I just want to follow up with Tom's comment about biologists not being real scientists. Biology is a complex field that requires consideration of multiple convergent pathways and a range of scientific disciplines, including chemistry, to unveil the underpinnings of how life functions on our planet. Chemists are just people who excelled at following easy bake oven instructions as a child. <laughs> Chemists can pretend mixing a lot of colorful solutions together is somehow harder than biological research, but biologists do much more. Honestly, did anyone even like the chemistry majors in college? Tom's arrogance is a textbook example of why. Love the show. We can't wait to listen every Tuesday. <laughs> uh, and our last bit for this week... An elementary school teacher wrote in, and this is just the one sentence I took. Being elementary school teachers, we drink a lot. (laughs) And that's going to do it (laughs) for emails. Bombcast at giantbomb.com is the place to write in. Just get it off your chest. Let's hear it. I don't know that I can handle any more shit stories unless they are of an unbelievably extravagant nature. Yeah, and I feel like we've we've solved the beef with the Australian footwear by all rallying around. At least you're wearing something on your feet. Yeah, exactly. Like this barefoot thing, I yeah. think is a totally that's it's disgusting. Barefoot found common ground. Yeah. Found, found the real monsters. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're barefoot in Australia, that's actually I want to hear from you. <laughs> barefoot in Australia here. Signed, Sing- barefoot yeah. in Australia. Uh, Long time listener. Yeah. Never thought this would happen to me. (laughs) (laughs) You finally caught me. You finally caught me. Uh, Nathan in Sydney writes in. Says, hi, this is Nathan in Sydney making a slight correction to the estimate of possible TV states in last week's podcast. Uh, The previous guy said each pixel had three possible states. Each pixel of a TV actually has three 8-bit channels holding 256 possible values. That's what I thought. Adding up to a 24-bit number of possible states. This is 16,777,216 possible states for each pixel to be in. A 1080p screen holds 2,073,600 pixels. The, this means the amount of images, uh, the, the number of images, uh, rather, uh, a color 1080p screen can possibly display is not 3 to the power of uh, 2,073,600, but 16,777,216 
to the power of 2,073,6300. This is a number that shits on 3 to the power of 2 million. Uh, that number is 1.5 times 10 to the... 14 million. Oh my god. 1,179th power. So that is a number so fuck off huge that no comparison to known time frames or measurements is suitable. <laughs> it's amazing. Also, this email is a Trojan horse because I'm piping in to say thongs are simply casual wear like sneakers. If that guy who wears thongs to work is telling the truth, then either he has a pretty lax job or he works outside a train station playing smoke on the water for change. <laughs> We've reached peak email. <laughs> Shut it down. Uh, there were a lot of people trying to sneak one in. tie things together oh. uh, that I did not. That I did not take. Uh, Evan in Australia writes and says to whichever Muppet insulted Canberra, Canberra, Aust- Canberra, <laughs> Australia. Canberrans are on average smarter than. And a lot of people wrote in with pronunciations that I'd I think it's Canberra, which I very deliberately didn't read. Okay. Uh, are on average smarter than any other major city in Australia. The average household income is also higher, meaning we can afford proper footwear. In saying that for the most part, thongs are acceptable anytime in summer, but not with jeans or pants. Wearing them in the winter is unacceptable. Love the show. P.S. Queensland is filled with bogans and idiots. Says bogans is apparently an Australian term for rednecks. Oh. I don't know. I got a few people talking about bogans Boy. this week. Please. You ever worried that this might be like horrific and insulting? Like, would you just say the B word? Oof. They're just getting you to say it now. Yeah. Bogans. Oh, no. Boggins. You know how many Boggins died for this information? One. <laughs> yeah. I had Bogans in my rafters once. I had to bug bomb it. Yeah. It's, they're tricky, too. Sometimes they'll survive a bug bomb. Oh. Higgins from Japan writes in and says, So, I also live in Japan. Mm-hmm. I live on the east coast of the country as well. I don't mean to start anything. This is in response to the email about what what Japanese kids are playing. Oh, yeah. Remember that one? Yeah, yeah. I don't mean to start anything with this British fellow, but I also teach English in Japan. My students play everything from Pokemon, Monster Hunter, whatever games are on the Wii U, PS3, and everything in between. Also, I don't know where this guy lives, but I see handhelds on the train all the time and McDonald's. People are playing 3DS and Vita, although at a smaller amount. The PSP is still very popular here as well. The biggest thing right now is Line. It's a messaging app that also has a ton of games you can download and compete against your friends in. That's like a phone app. Uh, things like Endless Runners, Sports Games, Match 3, etc. Also, Puzzle and Dragons is everywhere. Mm. It's true the Xbox 360 is relatively nowhere. They usually have one small shelf at Wonder Goo. And the only people I know that own them are Gaijin that I don't trust. <gasps> Smart. So this is some East Coast, West Coast beef? Yeah, yeah J- didn't J- the guy last week say he lived in like a small town? Yeah, Japan's getting hot. Japan's getting to be, about to be a hot zone. Is what yeah, I'm Japan's telling you. Japan's tiny. Yeah. Well, yeah, East Coast, West Coast, like across the street, right? Like yeah. Basically, this side uh, of the street or this side of the street. North, the south. Japan, Hokkaido like, and Japan's Tokyo. like similar in size to Kyoto. California or something like that. To yeah. California, I think. In what? some di- some of the distances, maybe not the landmass. I might be wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, anonymous email. Michael in London. This is also related to Japan. Says, "Don't believe George's lies." Oh. Well, this is, uh, yeah, from about the, the hostile, last week. It's hostile beef. While I lived among the wholesome community, well, I lived among the wholesome communities in northern and eastern Japan. I saw a surprising amount of Xbox 360 stuff in game stores, certainly comparable with the Wii and Wii U sections. More importantly, Persona is fucking huge. I question what business some no good manch has teaching English. Goodness knows what those poor Japanese kids thought what he was saying when he tried to pronounce Dark Souls. It is popularly believed that anyone born north of Cambridgeshire has their tongue in backwards. I doubt this guy has a job. He probably just hangs around in Konami round one all day. That said, he is right about Monster Hunter. My students were also mad uh, for anything Inazuma 11, Hatsune Miku, and all kinds of anime garbage on the PSP. Well, neither Manchunians nor Liverpudlians are any good at all. All right. That's Michael Michael from London. All right. That's cross continental <sighs> shit talk in there sweeps to another country yeah uh the shit talking is about to get a little closer to home though oh no andrew Wait, in st louis says the shit talking or the shit talking the, sh- the shit talking shit okay. hyphen talking okay i don't on the latest episode of dota today the idle thumbs dota podcast brad muir referred to brad shoemaker's dota habit as ultra casual <laughs> What? Saying he only wants to talk about hats while sitting in the jungle. 
My immediate first thought was of Shoemaker indulging his southern roots and slapping Muir in the face with a white glove, demanding satisfaction. I know exactly which game he's talking about. If, I actually know the match that he is referring to. If we could get some hot Brad on Brad action, 1v1 Pudge Wars mid preferred to settle once and for all who is the chosen Brad, I would be super pleased. I've played Pudge like once. That would be a bad idea for me. Yeah, I, okay. Yeah, I know exactly which match. All right. Can we watch He's a replay? Is that somewhere? He got upset with Kessler and me and one other person for talking too much about hat. He hates hats. He hates Arpu. All he right. hates everything there is to do with free to play, even in the, the most generous free to play game on the market. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, yeah. So I guess that's his problem. I don't know. You know Arpu I mean, is. you know, Trench could have sold salutes. It's true. Might have worked out. They might have been able to make another one. Might have, might have been able to buy that name. Yeah. <laughs> Martin in Scotland says forget the Australians they're far away and no one cares <laughs> your final email salvo was the real beef some elementary teacher thinks they know how to drink being a high school English teacher who has worked a lot with elementary or as we call them primary teachers let me tell you this they cannot handle their boobs <laughs> English teachers have to deal with the crippling weight of pupils who do not know how to punctuate understand classic literature or spell basic words and it all takes its toll I've seen, seen English teachers who could drink for Europe Elementary teachers get, get a bunch of hugs all day and at the end of the year get legit presents from kids. I've seen elementary teachers walk out of schools with bottles of malt whiskey under their arms at the end of a school year. But here's the rub. They wouldn't be able to handle it. <laughs> their lack of troubling, stress-free lives, planning lessons around finger painting shows that they do not know real pain. Ergo, cannot drink it away. Uh, on a side note, I heard about the history department in an old school having a night out once and ended with two fist fights. The police were called and one person woke up in the elevator of their apartment block with their trousers around their ankles. It makes sense, given that history teachers must cover the worst events of humanity over and over. Those guys can drink. <laughs> that was Martin from Scotland with that. Huh. Hmm. I, this, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It only gets worse from here. It's dark. Alexander writes in to talk about uh, our friend George, who teaches English in Japan. Okay. George wrote in last week to describe what Japanese kids are into these days, but I'm sorry to say that based on what he said, particularly where he was located... He is living amongst toothless country rubes, or in Japanese, inakamono. Oh, man. Sure, Monster Hunter is huge, but here in Tokyo, a.k.a. the 21st century, (laughs) there are Dark Souls 2 billboards all over the place, and Persona has a huge following. Furthermore, while the Vita has not caught on like the PSP, you see 3DSs and other handhelds everywhere. Plus, he totally missed out on mentioning Line, a social networking service that has messaging games and other things, and is huge in Japan right now. It has tons of free-to-play games. That is all the rage amongst junior high schoolers. But I guess we should just be happy that George in his sleepy little town on the western coast of Japan has running water, electricity, (laughs) and has finally stopped dragging their knuckles on the ground. All right. Thank you, Alexander. It cultivates a certain... Our emails have gone... We're doing it to ourselves. Yeah. Really. Only kind words. There's no... Yeah, the only way out is through. (laughs) I don't know if we'll survive. Not all of us will make it. I don't know. We also got another email from uh, someone at Epic saying, Mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to write in and say Fortnite is actually a game, uh, but someone beat me to it. So now we have multiple people from Epic writing and going, fuck that guy. (laughs) And this guy doubling down on fuck Epic and Unreal. So that's uh, great. Congratulations to everyone involved. Yes, we'll see. Um, Yeah. Developer beef. Do we have any emails that are like, um, you know, like, hey, that guy before was awesome and right. Like I think he's cool. I mean that unreal guy. Like, but being like this, that was very positive. Hey, hey Jeff. Hey, this is Brad from the Giant Bombcast. Hey, Brad. Hey. I just want to say that that question that Vinny asked a minute ago. Uh huh. Fuck that. <laughs> okay. Stupid fucking question. All right. Fuck that guy. I guess. Thanks. Not, I guess. All right. And also fuck Brad Muir. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Like P.S. Like where's where's this go? Uh, anybody above uh, I don't, anybody I don't, above 9th Street, Street and fucking inner Richmond is a toothless asshole <laughs> <laughs> lucky, lucky they have enough internet to <laughs> um, yeah we did I mean we got some positive emails we got some people saying that they really liked uh, hearing from uh, Iron Galaxy's Dave Lang on last week's show okay good yeah he was uh, great the sober Dave Lang I just want to know if there are people writing in e- with emails uh huh uh, just saying, hey, I want to write in and say, I completely agree with that other guy, what he said, and 
Man, go. Nope, it is uh, full on bandwagon jumping. Let's start some shit okay. uh, back and forth at this point. So uh, at some point we'll get away from that um, and close some of these these storylines off completely. I think we're done with. Uh, I think we're, we're done with these. shit. I think we're done. We're just about done with Australia, unless someone's got something. Well, maybe we'll get Teasdale on the phone, kind of see what he has to say about it. But the brown period. Yes, yes, the giant bomb cast brown period. Um, yeah, mm. that's gross for a lot of reasons. Uh, Alex writes and says, "Hi, I'm from New Zealand." And would like to say that, uh, wait, uh, okay, yes, yes. I would like to say that Nico from New Zealand is wrong. People who wear jandals in New Zealand are either one, rednecks, two, stoners, three, Nico. <laughs> Nico must be from the filthy South Island because only South Islanders would be foolish enough to wear those abominations of footwear fuck thongs. All right. That's, thanks, Alex. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Alex. 